I'm going to be doing what we call a body recomposition. And it's pretty cool because it's where you lose body fat and build muscle at the same time. And if you come over to my whiteboard with me, I'm going to explain exactly how to do that. Okay, it gives me great pride to welcome you to the magical whiteboard. And as you can hopefully read, this is going to be a six step plan. And as you can see, I've already written out one to six. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Now, I will apologize in advance for my handwriting because it is, well, there's no other way of saying it. It is just absolutely awful. But let's get into it nonetheless. I have my blue pen to match my blue shirt. Okay, starting with step number one, the very first thing that we need to do is get on top of our nutrition and in particular, our calories. So let me just write out calories. If you can't read this, don't worry too much because I'm going to be doing most of the talking. This is just for visual aid, if you like. Anyway, what do we need to do with our calories? Well, the very first thing that I'm going to be doing is entering what we call a calorie deficit. However, in my opinion, the whole terminology around calories in, calories out, and the calorie deficit has been watered down quite a lot in the last few years. So I'm going to go into a lot more detail. But if you are brand new here, if you're brand new to the world of fitness and nutrition, if you're brand new to my channel, and you have no idea what a calorie deficit is, then fear not, because it is actually incredibly simple. Calorie deficit is where you are literally eating fewer calories than you are burning. And you can create your calorie deficit in one of three ways. You can exclusively eat less, or you could exclusively move more, or you could take my preferred route of choice and eat a little bit less and move a little bit more. That means you're not having to be too restrictive on your diet, but you're also not having to move a heck of a lot more. Now, I want to get off to a fast start. I want to front load the hard work and I want to make fast progress. So what I'm going to do is start off by getting into a 750 daily calorie deficit. And when I do that, I'm going to lose about one and a half pounds of fat per week. So quite an aggressive deficit to start us off. To put it into perspective for you, this is what one pound of fat looks like. If you put it next to my head, you realize is actually quite substantial. And my goal is to lose one and a half of these every single week by putting myself in a 750 calorie deficit each day. Now, if you've never heard of all of this stuff and the maths is a bit like, how the heck has he figured all that out? Let me quickly explain. So there are 3,500 calories in one of these, in one pound of fat. So if I was to create a 500 calorie deficit every single day for one week, 500 times by seven is 3,500. So I want to lose one and a half. I want to get off to a fast start. I want to front load the hard work and make some decent progress in a relatively short space of time because that's obviously going to motivate me to keep going if I see the results on my body nice and fast. And if you multiply 3,500, the number of calories in one pound of fat by 1.5, which is the number of pounds of fat that I want to lose each week, you get 5,250. If you then divide 5,250 by seven, because there are seven days in a week, you get 750, which is why I'm going to aim for a 750 calorie deficit per day. Woo! I'll probably only maintain that deficit for two, maybe four weeks, depending on how I feel. I'll be honest with you, I don't have a great deal of fat to lose. So what I'll then do is taper my deficit right back to 250. So I'm only losing about half a pound of fat per week. Now that doesn't sound like much on the face of it, half a pound of fat a week, are you even gonna notice it? But now that you've seen the size of one of these, that's half of one of these each week. Now, bear in mind that I'm gonna be doing this plan for 12 weeks, and I'm gonna be doing the first two to four weeks at a 750 calorie deficit. So it all stacks up is basically the point I'm making. And like I said earlier, my preferred method of creating a calorie deficit is eating a little bit less and moving a little bit more. That way I'm not having to be too restrictive on my diet and what I'm eating or how much I'm eating, but it also means I don't have to go to the gym a load more, I don't have to start running or anything like that. So I'm gonna aim to eat 375 calories less a day, which is half of the 750 deficit. And if you think about it, 375 calories isn't that much. It's like one and a half fizzy drinks, it's a big snack, it's reducing one of my meals slightly in size, and then what I'm also gonna to aim to do is, you guessed it, I'm gonna to aim to burn 375 calories more a day. So the other half of my deficit is coming from movement. But remember what I said when I first got over to the whiteboard, it isn't just about calories in and calories out and creating a calorie deficit and eating whatever you want. 
I've done it myself and I've worked with enough clients to know that the quantity of your calories will create the fat loss, but the quality of your calories will dictate your lifestyle and how easy this whole process is. So when it comes to creating my calorie deficit from my food, those 375 calories that I'm gonna cut out each day, it's gonna be very much focused on cutting out the junk. So think anything like sugary snacks, so chocolate and sweets, crisps or potato chips, as you guys in the US say, alcohol, and of course, fast food. And listen, I can guarantee you that once you've cut this out for just 10 to 14 days, you will feel so much better. And you also realize how much damage it was doing to your gut health and to your mental health. It's quite funny because it actually gets to the point where you start to feel so much better in such a short space of time and you realize what was causing you all this damage that you don't even want it anymore. And once you don't want it, you change your value system and you stop missing it. What's also quite cool is your taste buds reset. Now, listen up because this is important. If you are new to this or if you haven't done it for a while, track your calories. Now, a lot of people are put off or skip past or don't think that this part of the plan applies to them because they are a special snowflake. But I promise you it is one of the most essential and important elements. First and foremost, the benefits outweigh the cons. So why wouldn't you do it? In just six weeks, you'll learn more about the food that you're eating and the nutritious value of it than you have done ever before. And I say six weeks because if you do it diligently, you only have to do it for that amount of time. After that, you will start to see food like Neo sees the matrix. You will look at a plate and not only know the calories in it, but the macro nutritional split. So as a result, you won't need to track your calories anymore. But the key word there was diligently. You can't do it for two days here and then stop doing it for three days there and then come back and do it for five days here. You need to do it diligently seven days a week for six weeks. That's 42 days to build a habit that's going to last a lifetime. And considering that most people live 4,000 weeks, which is 28,000 days, I don't think it's too much to ask to get you to do this for 42 of them. But the biggest benefit above everything is you'll actually get what you want. You'll look better, you'll get into the shape of your life, in fact, and probably more importantly than that, you will feel the healthiest you've ever felt. So if you've never tracked your calories before, track your calories. The other huge benefit of tracking your calories and doing it properly the one time for those six weeks, 42 days, is that you will realize that you, like most of us, are a creature of habit. And you've probably got five, maybe 10 absolute max meals in rotation at any one point. So once you know the calories and the macros in each of those meals, you're not gonna need to track your calories ever again. And that's the stage that I'm at. I eat the same breakfast every single day. I have the same two snacks every single day, a bowl of blueberries, which is 100 grams, and protein yogurt. And then I have five meals in my rotation, which I swap out between lunches and dinners. And I know the calories and I know the macros in each of those. So I don't need to track my calories as part of this process. Before we move on to step two, let me give you a few tips to make healthy eating easier. Don't keep vices in your house, whatever they may be. If you were an alcoholic, if you had a friend or a family member who was an alcoholic, the very first thing you would get them to do is pour all the booze down the kitchen sink. It's the same for you. If you are addicted to chocolate, throw all of your chocolate out. Number two is to never shop hungry. It's just a recipe for disaster. Number three is to delete all of these apps, whether it's Uber Eats, Deliveroo, DoorDash, I'm sure there's others. You just need to remove the temptation because there's only so long, there's only so many days that you could open up your phone and see that amazing icon which you associate with delicious greasy food until you give in and you go, let me just have a little look at the offers. Let me just, oh, let me just see, I just want to try a little peek. No, get it out, out of sight, out of mind. And then number four, last but not least, is to always have healthy snacks in the house. Now I'm gonna do an entire other video on this, but just to give you the headlines, a bit of a spoiler alert if you are still with me now, five snacks that I love to have around are Baby Bells, low calorie jelly, protein bars, dark chocolate, and sweet fruits like my blueberries. And while we're on the topic of calories, technically not calories, because there's actually no calories in it, but I forgot to put it in one of the six steps and it's actually really important, is to make sure that you're staying hydrated and drinking a lot of water. Water is a funny one because it's a little bit like protein. Everyone knows it's good for them. Everyone knows they should be really having more of it. But I think what holds most people back is not that they know it's good for them, it's they don't know why it's good for them. So let me quickly explain 
the benefits and why it's actually so healthy for you. So first and foremost, water acts a little bit like a secondary energy system. You get most of your energy from your calories. That is the fuel that gets us up and keeps us alive. But water keeps you moving. What I mean by that is that most people don't realize just how sensitive their brains are to dehydration. If you become just one or two percent dehydrated your brain is very sensitive to that and it starts to shut down non-essential processes in your body now what that looks like in real life is you become very lethargic you become very lazy and when you're lazy you're not going to get up and you're not going to do all the things we need you to do to burn the calories to create your calorie deficit you're also going to lose your drive you're also going to lose your willpower you're going to lose your motivation you're going to be far more likely to give in so think of water like i say like a secondary backup generator the other great benefit of water particularly when you're in a fat loss phase is that it fills your stomach and when it fills your stomach it expands the walls of that stomach and it sends a signal to your brain that you are full because more often than not when you think you're hungry you're actually just thirsty so whatever you do all of the stuff we talked about with the calorie section, we are still on step one, by the way. I told you I was going to go into a lot of detail today. Make sure you are staying hydrated, guys. Okay, let's talk about step number two. And that is that I'm going to be making sure I'm getting a high protein diet. So number two, as you could probably imagine, is protein. Everybody's favorite macronutrient. Now, I'm going to be aiming for 200 grams of protein every single day but you don't necessarily need to go that high. In fact, most of my clients, when they first start working with me, the men tend to be having about 80 grams of protein and the women tend to be having about 60. Almost all of them, by the end of their 12-week program, have doubled what they started on. And honestly, a lot of that just comes down to try to be a little bit more conscious and a little bit more mindful about trying, and that's the key word there, trying, to get more protein in. But like I say, you don't need to be aiming for 200 grams of protein every single day. What I would recommend you do is you take your body weight in kilos and multiply by 1.8. Speaking of protein targets, I probably should have told you about this earlier, but to be honest, I just completely forgot because I got so immersed in making this amazing video. And by the way, if you haven't already, please do like the video, subscribe to the channel because I'm making like three or four of these videos every single week. But yeah, if you scroll down underneath this video, you will see the description. If you click the first link in the description, I'm going to give you completely personalized nutrition targets for free. And the best part is all you have to do is put in your age, your weight, your height, your sex, and your activity level. It's going to take you 30 seconds. I'm going to send you a calorie target and a protein target so you know exactly how much you should be eating to make sure that you hit your goal so you can follow along this plan and get the results that you want. Anyway, Let's carry on talking about protein. We just spoke about tips to make healthy eating easier, but to be honest, the best hack to make healthy eating easier and to hit your calorie target is to eat more protein. And that's because protein is the hardest of the three macronutrients, protein, carbs, and fat, for your body to break down and to digest. As a result, it sits in your stomach for longer, it fills your stomach, it does exactly what water does, it expands the walls of it, sends signals to your brain that you are full, but it also takes more energy, more calories to break down that protein. And as a result, it activates as a process called thermogenesis, where you're actually burning calories just to digest your food. But as well as that, it also preserves the old lean muscle mass, which is gonna be important. Because remember, we're doing a body recomposition here. So we're losing fat, but we're building the old pythons at the same time. And any ladies watching, no one protein shake is not going to turn you into Arnold Schwarzenegger. If that was the case, every single man and his dog on planet Earth would be walking around absolutely jack. And last time I checked, they're not. But what eating more protein also does is it helps your body to prioritize body fat as an energy source. So you're actually going to break down that body fat and consume it as energy. And that's how you're going to lose the fat in the first place. And it's going to support your immune system, which is going to be very important when you're in a deficit because your body's having to work harder. Okay, that's all well and good, but you might be wondering, how do I actually eat more of the stuff? How do I get more protein into my diet? So the four best sources are meat, fish, dairy and eggs and that is because they are complete proteins which means they contain all nine of the essential amino acids which are the building blocks of protein in them and they're called essential amino acids because it's essential that you get them in your diet because your body can't naturally synthesize them but if not those if you don't eat any of them because you work for peter or you're deluded enough to believe that cows are the reason the world is warming up then supplements, specifically whey protein isolate shakes, are a great choice because they're low in calories and very high in protein. 
And like I said earlier, protein bars are a great healthy snack to have around. Okay, moving swiftly on to step number three, I'm going to be working out. What a shocker, eh? I specifically am going to be working out five times per week. All of my workouts are going to be 60 minutes. I'm going to be following a push, legs, pull, rest, upper, lower, rest, split. So push, legs, pull, upper, lower, with rest days after the pull and after the lower. And I'm going to be keeping my workouts nice and simple. Effective, but simple. So what do I mean by that? Well, I'm only going to be doing five to six exercises. I'm going to be doing more sets, which means I have less moving around the gym to do, less loading weight and unloading weight, less waiting for equipment to come available. What I'm also going to be doing is lighter weight and shorter rest periods so that I can keep the intensity up and make the entire workout more efficient. I can get in, get my work done and get out in 60 minutes. I'm going to be focusing on compound movements. This is very important. So compound movements are multi-joint, multi-muscle exercises that use the biggest muscles in your body. So think Squats, deadlifts, lunges, pull-ups, push-ups or press-ups as you call them in the UK, chest press, overhead press, lap pull-downs, cable rows. I could go on, but hopefully you get the idea. I'm not going to be spending an entire session just doing bicep curls or crunches. I will put them at the end of my sessions and spend maybe five, ten minutes finishing up with some arms and abs. But because I'm focusing on the compound movements, I will have already worked on biceps, my triceps, my abs, as secondary moving muscles as part of those lifts. But the reason you want to be focusing on the compound movements is because those are the exercises that burn the most calories. So it adds to the efficiency of the workouts. And they do this because the muscles require oxygen. So the bigger the muscle, the more oxygen that is required. The more oxygen that's required, the harder your body has to work. The harder your lungs have to work to breathe the oxygen in, and then the harder your heart has to work to pump the oxygen in the blood to the muscle so that it can contract. What I'm also going to be doing, and this is so important, and so few people do this, is I'm going to be tracking my workouts. And this is important so that I can progressively overload. And this is how we get strong. This is how we build muscle. We increase the amount of volume that we're doing over time. As a working example, let's take the bench press because every man and his dog has heard of the bench press. So let's say you can do three sets of 10 at 60 kg. So day one, week one, you go into the gym, you start with barbell bench press, because where else are you going to start, right? And you rack it up, you can do three sets, you can do 10 reps every single time, and you can do 60 kilos. The next time you go and do that exercise, you go and do the barbell bench press, you want to be trying to increase the amount of weight that you're lifting or increasing the number of reps that you do. Or if you really want to, although this is the least time efficient way of doing it, you can add an extra set. The amount of volume that you're doing is the number of reps multiplied by the weight multiplied by the number of sets. So in this example, we've got three sets, we've got 10 reps, so that's three times 10, so that's 30. And then we need to multiply by six. So three multiplied by six is 1,800. Yeah, that sounds about right. But like I said, you don't necessarily need to work out five times a week. In fact, you probably don't. The chances are you've got kids, you've got a very busy job, or you've got a little bit of gym anxiety, and that's absolutely fine. What I would suggest you start with is three full body workouts per week. Focus on these principles, compound movements, short rest periods, higher rep ranges, less exercises and more sets. And I guarantee you, you are going to make phenomenal progress. And truth be told, that's exactly how I would say 80% of my clients start. All of my clients get a completely personalized workout program depending on their goals, what equipment they've got, or whether they want to train at home or in the gym. Okay, moving swiftly on to step number four. I'm going to be getting 10,000 steps in every single day. I would say of all the things that we're talking about today, Staying hydrated, drinking more water, and making sure you're getting your steps in are the two most underrated elements. And I think it's probably because most people see them as the most mundane, the most basic, the most boring. But they're also probably the ones that are going to give you the most leverage, that are going to make the biggest difference. And the reason I say that is that by doing 10,000 steps every single day, so 70,000 steps per week, this is actually where I'm going to burn most of my calories. So most people, depending on how fast they're walking and their body weight, will burn 300 to 500 calories per day 
by walking 10,000 steps. So if your goal is really to get into the best shape of your life, that should be incentive enough because walking is easy. Walking gets you outside, gets you fresh air. You can do so many things whilst you're walking. You can multitask, right? So my way of making it fun, of making it more engaging is to listen to a podcast. Yours could be FaceTiming your mum. Yours could be listening to a playlist or catching up on work emails or even doing work calls. A lot of my clients do that. The workouts are more for your body composition, your mental health, and with cardio. But actually, now I think about it, so is your walking. Or maybe not the body composition so much. But certainly your mental health, walking is going to help with that. And obviously your cardiovascular health as well. So, I mean, I'm just giving you more incentives, more benefits here. But yeah, 10,000 steps a day is what I'm going to be aiming for. But as we get everything, if you are not there already, if that seems incredibly overwhelming, do not worry. What I suggest you do is that after you've watched this video and of course liked it and subscribed to my channel, in fact, I'll wait. Okay, you done it? Yeah. So after you've watched this video, I want you to go to your health app on your phone. Now, every single smartphone now has a pedometer built in. It is tracking, I mean, it's tracking a lot, but it's tracking how many steps you've done. Certainly iPhones do. I'm pretty sure Androids do as well. If for whatever reason you cannot find a pedometer, a step counter app on your phone, download one immediately right now, well, after you've watched this video and start tracking your steps. See what you're up to. See where you are right now. If right now you are doing, you are averaging 5,000 steps a day, all I want you to do is aim to be 20% better next week. And then the week after that, aim to be 20% better again. And eventually, within three, four, five weeks, you will regularly get to 10,000 steps per day. I can guarantee it. In fact, funny story, I'll tell you a little anecdote. I had a client who I started working with. This might have been maybe three years ago now. A lovely woman. She never got over 2,000 steps for the first two or three weeks that we were working together. But she really wanted to lose weight. And I literally sat down and said, look, can I be really honest with you? If you really want to shift this weight, we need to find a way of upping your steps. So she thought long and hard about it and just bought a treadmill, <laughs> stuck it in her house. And then every evening she went home from her work. She had a very like sedentary office-based job and it was a long hours. She was important in the company. She went home and she watched her TV. She did all sorts of stuff. And she walked on her treadmill. She caught up with her sons, her, her husband, all sorts. And suddenly she went from 2,000. And by the time we'd finished working together, every single day, she was doing 12,000 steps. And guess what happened? Yeah, she lost a ton of weight. And last but not least on steps, I did say 10,000 per day. But I'd actually recommend that you look at this as a weekly 70,000 target. Because there are going to be days, for whatever reason, it's snowing outside, you're ill, you're hungover, although you shouldn't be hungover because we're going to cut our alcohol for these 12 weeks, obviously. But let's say there is just a bad day, something happens, a meteor hits outside your house. I don't know, your car gets stolen, right? Lots of things go wrong. We are human beings and life is very unpredictable and it normally goes against us when we are trying to make progress. That just tends to be how the universe is, by the way. Anyway, so aim to have a weekly target. So if you miss your steps on a Tuesday, well, that's fine because you can make up for it on Wednesday or Thursday or Friday. Or what a lot of people do is because if they have a sedentary office job, they'll walk more purposefully at the weekend. But yeah, try and get to 7,000 steps per week. Find a way to make it something that you look forward to. For me, it's podcasts. For you, it might be something else. But this is a game-changing habit. Okay, step number five. And I've put this as step number five, but truth be told, I probably should have put it as step number three. And that is our sleep guys because sleep is so damn important i am going to be prioritizing my sleep and making sure that i am getting at least seven hours of high quality sleep per night now you might be thinking yeah but how are you going to do that Doug? because sleep is just so unpredictable sometimes you want to have a good night's sleep and you just can't well that's exactly what I'm going to explain right now. When I first got into this game, I quite quickly discovered that there were three pillars to living a healthy life. There's your movement, so your workouts and your steps and just living an active lifestyle. There's your nutrition, so your calories, your protein, your water, your fiber, your micronutrients, etc. And then there's your sleep. And I used to think that they had equal weighting. As I have aged and my energy tank is being depleted more so and faster, I have realized that sleep over the age of 30, which I imagine most people who are watching this are, is the bedrock of health. Sleep has become, and I expect will continue to become even more important to me. Now you obviously know the main benefit of sleep is when our brain and our body are recovering. 
But most people don't realize it's also when your hormones are brought back into balance. And you have a lot of hormones. It's not just estrogen in women and testosterone in men. You have cortisol, which is your stress hormone. You have hunger hormones called leptin and ghrelin. You have thyroid. I mean, that's just a few. I think, I believe I'm right in saying, if there's any endocrinologists watching this, please feel free to connect me. But I think we have over 20. I'll be honest with you. It's not my area of specialty. I don't know what all of them do. But those ones, cortisol, stress hormone, going to be pretty important. Hunger hormones, leptin and ghrelin, going to be pretty important. Because this is where you get your drive, your get up and go, your vim and your vigor. You know what it's like when you string together two or three really good night's sleep. You wake up and you just fly out of bed and you sail through the day. Everything that you do just feels easy. You actually look forward to doing hard stuff. And then most people get a little bit cocky. They get a little bit arrogant. They start to think they're invincible. And then they go and have a few drinks or they eat terribly or they stay up late and then they're back to square one. But like I said, when I introduced this step, it's not just about getting seven hours of sleep a night. It's about trying to maximize the quality of that sleep. And there's two ways that I'm going to talk to you about now, which are going to guarantee to improve the quality of your sleep. The first thing that you want to look at is your sleep environment. So the obvious things here are that you want to make your room cold, dark, and quiet. So to make it cold, what are we going to do? We're going to buy a fan from Amazon, or if you really want to splash out, you can get aircon. To make it dark, well, we're going to get blackout blinds, or even better, shutters. And then to make it quiet, earplugs. Trust me, absolute game changer. A lesser known hack, but one that will make so much sense once I've explained it to you, is to sleep with your bedroom door open. I mean, obviously, make sure you're safe, but sleep with your bedroom door open. The reason being is that if you think about it, if you're lying in a relatively small bedroom, unless you're an absolute baller, for eight hours a night, breathing in, breathing out, I did that wrong way around, but you get my point, you are essentially starting to build up carbon dioxide in the room. You start to build up poor quality oxygen. So what you want to do is have your bedroom door open to the rest of your house so there is more fresh oxygen available. But I'd also encourage you to invest in your sleep environment. And this is what I'm going to be doing. I dread to look at their website and I am certainly not sponsored by them. Although if they see this video and they want to send me one, I would obviously be very grateful. But I want to get an eight sleep mattress. Like I say, I haven't even looked at their website, so I do not know how expensive they are. But Judging by what they can do, I would expect that they're not cheap. These mattresses can warm it up, they can cool it down, they can even raise the top of the mattress where your pillow is if it detects, that's right, detects that you are snoring. Now, I'm a pretty good sleeper, but my mattress isn't the best. And if I'm going to get in the best shape of my life in the next 12 weeks, in the next 90 days, then we need to optimize for everything. What I'd also recommend you do, if you haven't already, is invest in a great pillow. You're going to spend more time with your pillow than anyone else on this planet. You've got a more intimate relationship with a pillow than you do with your parents. So invest in a good one. What I would also suggest you do is make sure you've got comfortable and breathable bedding. And you might be listening to me and thinking, hold on a minute, blackout blinds, a fan, earplugs, a mattress, a pillow, bedding, and I go on and on and on. You might be thinking, I'm not made of money, mate. Well, listen, Let's say, for example, all of this was to cost $1,000 or £1,000 or 1,000 rupees or wherever you are in the world, but 1,000 rupees is not a lot of money. That would be an absolute bargain. But let's just say it's 1,000 for, for argument's sake. How long is all of this stuff going to last you? It's probably going to last you five years. How many days are in five years? Let me just check. There are 1,825 days, or in this case, nights in five years. So if all of this stuff is going to last five years, then you'll make an investment that really the cost is spread over that time. If the cost is spread over that time and it costs you 1,000, but it's going to last you 1,825, then that means all of this is costing you less than a pound, less than a dollar, less than a rupee per day. Now, when you frame it that way, that's a pretty good investment. This could cost $2,000 pounds, rupees yen, whatever it might be. And it would still be a good investment. And the reason it's such a good investment is because of how important sleep is. It's because of the return on investment that you're going to get from it. This is going to 10x your life, whether it's your relationships, your health, or even your finances. You are going to literally make 10 times the amount that you invest on this. This is a worthwhile investment. And I promise you, 
I do not work for a mattress company. I'm not affiliated. There's no links. I don't have anything. Okay, the second thing that you're going to want to do to improve the quality of your sleep, and you'll be very pleased to hear that this is not going to cost you a penny, is do the 3 two, one rule. So this 3 two, one rule is very straightforward. It basically means that you are going to stop eating three hours before you go to bed. You're going to stop drinking anything, water, coffee, alcohol, juice, anything, two hours before you go to bed. And you are going to try and come off your screens, whether it's your laptops, your TVs, your phones, one hour before bed. The reason you want to stop eating three hours before bed is because it's a metabolic process. And metabolic processes raise your heart rate. They raise your heart rate because they require you to burn calories to do so. And if you think about it, when you're asleep and when you're trying to go to sleep, you want your heart rate coming down to a resting level. But if you're trying to digest food, it's fighting against that. You want to stop drinking two hours before bed because if you're anything like me and you're past the age of 35, you'll appreciate that if you don't, you will wake up at least once, if not twice, maybe even three times in the night to go to the bathroom. Now, if you wake up in the night, this is obviously going to disrupt your sleep. If you disrupt your sleep, it's going to minimize the quality of your sleep, not maximize it like we want to. And you want to try and emphasize the word try because I appreciate this is the hardest one to come off your screens one hour before bed because of the blue light that these guys emit, which stops the production of your sleep hormone called melatonin. Okay, we're coming to a close, but before I go, let me talk you through step six. Last and least, and I said that very purposefully, supplements. Let's give it up on writing now, but that says supplements. So I'm going to be taking a very simple supplement stack that I recommend to every single one of my clients, whether they are male or female, whether they are 18 years old or 80 years old. And that is creatine, vitamin D, omega-3s, a multivitamin, and electrolytes. Let me explain each of those in a little bit of detail and give you dosages so you can do the same if you want to. I should say right now, once again, I am not affiliated to any supplement companies, but if they want to, you know, throw me some money, throw me a discount code, whatever, then obviously, I'll, you know, I'm not going to say no, am I? But I buy all of my supplements from a UK-based company called Bulk. And I love these guys because they are transparent, they use high-quality ingredients, and they're British. And even though I don't live in Britain anymore, I still like to support British businesses where I can. So first and foremost, creatine. You want to be taking 10 grams, 10 grams. I used to recommend 5 grams. Now I recommend 10 grams of creatine monohydrate every single day first thing in the morning. Now, this is going to increase your strength and your power during your training by giving you more energy because there is more water in the muscles. And, and this is the reason that I now recommend 10 grams of not five, it's been shown to come with enhanced cognitive benefits. In other words, it's going to make you more focused. It's just going to make you smarter, which is amazing. Next up, omega-3s. You want to find one that is high in two ingredients. There's two acids actually called EPA and DHA. Now, the ones I take have about 3,000 milligrams of EPA and 1,800 milligrams of DHA. So that's per day. And ideally, you want to spread the dosage throughout the day. So mine comes three cap capsules. So I have one in the morning with lunch. Sorry, with breakfast. I have one at lunch with lunch. And I have one at dinner with dinner. Okay, yeah. You know what? You get my point. There's two big benefits that come with omega-3s that are particularly pertinent to what we are trying to achieve with the six step plan. Number one is that it reduces inflammation. So it reduces swelling inside your body. That means you're going to recover faster from your workouts. It's going to keep you healthy, it's going to keep you fitter, and it means you can go back into the gym faster. Benefit number two is that as long as you're doing all of this other stuff, it's going to boost the effect of improving your cholesterol profile. Number three is a multivitamin. Being honest, this is like the least important of the five that I mentioned earlier. It acts a little bit like a failsafe. So it's essentially filling any nutrient gaps that might be in my diet. And that's important because it's going to support my immune system. And like I say, if you're in a calorie deficit, your immune system is probably going to be a little bit compromised. Now, of course, I can't give you a precise dosage on this one because everybody's different. You might be slightly deficient in iron or vitamin B or whatever it is. So I suggest if you don't know, probably get your blood work done. If you can, find out what you're deficient in and double down on that. Or just find a decent multivitamin from a reputable company and pop one of those every day and you'll forget about it very quickly. But it will come with some decent benefits. Okay, next up, vitamin D, a very important one as we are heading into winter, or at least we are at the time that we're recording this. Again, like the multivitamin, this is going to enhance your immune function, which is very important. And there is a lot of links between mental health 
and vitamin D, which I think is super important any time of the year, but particularly as it gets colder, darker, and just a little bit more miserable. Last but not least is electrolytes. These are going to keep you energized. They're going to keep you hydrated and they can reduce the chance of you getting muscular cramps, which is very important because it means you can recover faster and you can stay on track with your gym workouts. Electrolytes are also a fantastic substitute to any sugary, calorific drinks because you can literally buy the powder, put them in a glass of water and have it two, maybe even three times a day. That's exactly what I do. I have two a day. I have breakfast, I have dinner. And that is it, guys. That is the magical six-step plan that I'm going to use to get into the best shape of my life before my 37th birthday. Make sure that you know your calories and stick to your calorie target. Like I said, if you need help with this, click the first link in the description that's underneath this video. You can use my completely free calorie calculator and I will send you personalized nutrition targets. And I should have said earlier, I'm actually going to take the time to explain what all of your numbers mean in much more detail so you've got complete peace of mind that you're doing the right thing. Track your calories. Make sure you're tracking your calories. Protein. Try and get 1.8 times your body weight in kilos of protein every day. It's going to fill you up. It's going to help you to build the lean muscle. It's going to keep you healthy. Workouts. Aim for at least three full body workouts each week with short rest periods, focusing on compound movements. 10,000 steps a day. Game changer, guys. Step number five, sleep. Seven hours of high quality sleep a night. And last and least, get those supplements in. And I promise you, if you follow this six step plan, you are gonna get in the best shape of your life. In 12 weeks time, you will look back having watched this video and go, damn, I am so glad I watched that video, listened and implemented. And that's the most important part. Implemented all of this advice. Keep it simple. The simpler it is, this might feel a little bit overwhelming. If this is all new to you, you might be watching this. I'm impressed if you are still watching it. And you might be thinking, I, I honestly don't even know where to start with this. Well, that's what I do. That is exactly why I am here. So if you click the second link in the description of this video, you can apply for my online coaching program and we will do this together. You're going to get a completely personalized workout program and nutrition plan. You're going to get loads of support. You're going to get loads of accountability with weekly check-ins, monthly calls, and, and you're going to access to my community. That's amazing as well. That's added support. That's added motivation, added accountability. And probably best of all, you're going to get all the knowledge that I've accrued over 15 years of training and five years of coaching over 100 people, men and women, young and old, all around the world. Anyway, guys, I will leave this video here. I really hope you've enjoyed it. But more importantly, I hope you found this useful. I love making these videos. I'm very passionate about this. Hopefully you can tell that. But I want you to promise me that you're going to try and implement all of this stuff. Because without the implementation, if you just have the information, if you know it all, but don't do anything with it, you're not going to get anywhere. And no one is going to care. Anyone, I'm going to leave the video here. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already liked, subscribed, we can't be friends. I'm so sorry. But I love you all the same. I'm only joking. And I'll see you in the next one.